Hi, this is Sally and I am going to be fixing this rocking chair. I'm going to do it on the floor because it is just so heavy. I daren't risk it on my table, which is where I usually do a lot of my work. When I do things, I think of my health and safety and I don't want to risk this falling on me. I certainly don't want this falling off my table and getting damaged. So let's get on with it. I put it on its side rather than on its back and I'm just going to ease these out as I go. Now this is unusual. You don't usually put the backing tape underneath here. You usually put this on and then the tape, but everybody does their projects differently. And some people don't even put this on underneath a rocking chair. They just leave it open. I'll just work my way around all of these layers because all of this has to come off. I think the easiest thing is to take all of this off in layers and then I can see what's going on underneath each layer and then just use the pliers to pull these staples out. They're coming out quite well at the moment but that might change later on depending if they've become rusty or not. Sometimes you can grab hold of it like this and twist like that and they'll come out. That makes it a lot easier if you can do it that way. And then just unravel it. And then I can see which ones here need to be pulled. And then I can get underneath here onto the outside cover. This is a very old piece and I don't want to ruin the frame if I can help it. This chair really doesn't want to give up its secrets. So I'm having to pull it out layer by layer. Some of this can actually just be binned. This is something I need to reuse. So I'm going to pop that over there for now. It doesn't want to come out. And now the next layer. I don't know what people were doing. There's a problem underneath here and instead of fixing it, they just put extra layers of crud on it instead of doing what they should have done, which was fix the problem. I don't get people. I really don't get people sometimes. This is a struggle and a half, I tell you. I have been pushing all of this down to get it out. It's not necessarily working. The last people put foam over it and Dacron. I've taken the foam off. The fabric I'm putting in is actually a velvet so it's not going to want to act like a thinner fabric which is more pliable so I'm going to pop this in and secure it and it'll give a sleeker line the other seem to take up too much of the chair seat you don't want to be taking up too much of the chair seat you want the chair seat to be wide enough to sit on all I'm going to do is pull this all the way back to the back of the chair and then find the front and I'm going to cut generously not too tight in so that has to go down there to the back always readjust make sure you know where you're going come here and the side of the chair is here but i'm going to cut a good inch out from where i need to secure it i can trim that up later i'm going to start pushing this in behind the back here and it takes a little while because the two dacrons kind of stick together a little bit i don't want to cut anything until it's in place i'm glad i took the extra stuff off Otherwise it would be even harder. Then I can start cutting to ease it in at the back. I'm not going to do anything else at the front here. I've just pulled this through here. There's just a split in the fabric and I'm going to cut towards the base of this split and a little bit further, not too much. Push that down and back through and down to the bottom of the chair frame. This just keeps straight and I'll pull this back after I've put the front in. This is the fabric that I pushed through straighten that out a little bit. I'm just going to cut on up and into that mess at the top here because I really don't need it. It just needs a little bit more of a clip up. That will fold that way and that will push on up under there. Make a nice neat finish. This all pulls forward. I'm just going to push that in. Make sure all of this is pushed back underneath because I don't want that showing and secure. The reason I don't want to put the chair form in just yet is because this would not work if I had it in place. I'm just going to work my way up slowly and into place. Once I've got it in, I'm going to start cutting it back because I'm going to be putting piping over here. So if I don't do a good job of cutting it back, it won't be too much of a problem. And that's something else I've got to put in first is the piping. I'm going to pull this as hard back as I can, like that, because I need it to be as firm as possible on that arm. I've done the same on this side. And then I'm just going to cut down and cut it back. I don't want everything coming around here because this is a shaped back. 
and I'll do the same this side too. Now like the arms, the pile goes down. Might not have mentioned that, but that's what happens. I've decided to do the back seat like a slip cover. So I've centered the back here, making sure that the pile on the fabric goes forward. I'm gonna put pins in this way. <laughs> this is the theory anyway, that's there. So I'm gonna make my way across the top here, put another one on this way. So basically I'm gonna go out on both sides I'm trying to make it equidistant across the back so that I've got enough fabric for the front. Maybe I can't do it that way. I'll probably have to put a pleat in and that's fine. So I won't pull it tight. I'll just pull it in so it's nice and even. That goes in there to there. And then I'm just going to pop this down here to the bottom. Now I'm going to have to join the fabric here. That just goes right under there so it's not going to matter too much. I have to be behind the wood so I can't have pin marks showing and I'll take that up. I'm not going to put the pleat in just yet but I will secure it. I'm going to put my center in here and line it up. The thing is with a slip cover you can pull it on tighter. Is that even there? I'm going to bring it out to the side there like that and I'm going to put a pin right there. I'm also going to put a pin on the other side to hold it so it's nice and even. This is actually coming round into the top. I'll bring this in here first and work up to the top because this really has to come in tight. So sometimes you have to be creative in this job, you just have to work another way around. Now I've pulled the back of this forward slightly so it should give me a little bit extra room for pinning. Not very much, by the way. It's a little bit tighter than I want. It's about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is a pain in the butt, an oversight from me. But anyway, so I'm gonna pull this out. It will go to about half an inch as I get further up. It's just down there. I didn't realize how chubby it was. Make my way up and pull it in. And pull that back in. Just as well I released it, I let it come forward. It's still a good inch from being pulled in. Velvet's just not very forgiving. It doesn't want to go into those nice little shapes you want them to. I'm trying to keep this line straight up, put that in, and it's also coming in here, so it's rounding here as well. It looks like in order to get this to work, I'm gonna to have to put extra filler in on the corners. That happens. I'm just gonna make it a little bit rounder than it originally is. If I pull it in like that, which would work, you've got these wrinkles coming and you don't want that. So I'm gonna make it round into there. So I'll find my center point here and put that there. So I'm gonna put the corner in first and then work out from there. Now usually this side is my better side, so that's why I'm gonna use this as my template, but I will check before I decide. What I'm going to do is find a piece to put on here and attach it so it goes down inside there, and then I'll finish off that side. But in the meantime, I'm also going to put a few in here just to make sure I've got it where I want it to be. I've just put a couple more along here to hold it and pull it in on this side. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with this is just take a few measurements. The front of the chair is 24 inches. So if I measure from that crease to that crease, it's about 24, yep. And the measurement at the back, inside the arms, was 19. Let's double check that. And that's correct too, okay. Now I've got to decide which side of the chair I rather like, because I'm gonna make it identical. From the front of the cushion to the start of it going round is about six inches, which is there. But on this side, it's further back. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this side of the cushion as the right side. Sometimes you have to make a choice. So I'm gonna just cut up here to here and then carefully cut on round. And I'm going to smooth all of these out so that it's a nice even line. Because obviously when you're folding paper, it doesn't always do what you want it to do. That is the new shape to the cushion cover. I fold this in half and you can see it's twisted and this is further out. And cut up to the center here, because I know that's 24 inches. Half of 19, nine and a half from the center. So this is gonna be my center mark. Pull this out here and then cut on in a straight line and a little bit out from there. Then I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna do a test run and if I don't think it's where I want it, I'll make 
notations of where things need to go. I'm lucky I've got one of these. It's great for my DIY. But it's also quite useful in upholstery. I'm just going to mark there and there for the centre. The side I like is actually the wider of the two sides. I am going to draw around that side like this and then I'm going to flip it so that I can draw around the same side on the other side here. And you can see this is actually considerably smaller than the original that I cut. I'm going to have to take all of this off because I want the piping to be on the edge and not rolled round and invisible. The whole idea is it looks like it's a cushion setting there. Fold this down the centre line like that. I'm going to put this down. Now I'm aware that I straighten this. I'm going to pop this here. I'm going to give it a half inch seam allowance on that end. I'm not going to pin it because it doesn't like being pinned. I'm going to cut down here half an inch from that edge in a straight line and again on the bottom here put my center mark in i actually cut it with half an inch allowance here and i'm going to do that again now i'm going to use this again and i'm just going to make a little nick in the top here and that's to show me that the piping has to at least be visible by here i need to make some double welt and single welt i can't go on the bias so I've gone from one corner to the other. I've just cut two lengths at two inches for the double piping. I'm going to cut some lengths up at one and a half inches. Make sure that everything's going the same way. So that's my first piece. And my second piece is going that way. Pop that at right angles like that. Pop it under the foot. I'm going to do it on a 2.6. And I'm going to go from one corner to the other like that. Fold this over, pop that at right angles and loop it on. I prefer to do my piping this way. I'm going to put my piping foot on. It's got the groove for the piping to follow through. Now my piping cord goes in the center there. Fold that around like that and slide it underneath. I usually leave it about an inch at the top. I've extended the stitch length to a five and now I'm going to carry on going. I'm going to just sew this on down, keeping that piping in the fold of the fabric. Split the pieces apart like that and then cut back to within a quarter of an inch of the stitches. The smaller it is, the better if you've got very thick fabric. As I get closer, I'm going to open that, fold it over and make sure that that seam stays as flat as possible because then you are spreading the thickness of the fabric over a wider area and it should go in quite smoothly. I am going to start my piping, not quite at the back because this is going to go underneath the chair back, about seven inches in from the back end there. Pop it down and I'm going to allow my half inch seam allowance. The thicker the fabric, the less reliable the flange is for half an inch, by the way. So just remember that. And then I'm going to sew. The advantage here is the velvet goes this way, the pile goes more or less that way, so it's not walking against itself. When I go back up the other way, it will. I'm just going to follow the shaping round on the cushion cover. As I come to the front, I'm going to cut the piping flange at 45 degree angle from this corner in. And then I'm going to sew into the corner, leave the needle down, take the foot up, and twist and that just goes in perfectly. Pull the cording right back on itself and then drop it into place and then follow the front. Into the corner, drop the needle, pick the foot up and swing everything back into place. And now all I've got to do is finish up. I've cut back about an inch. I'm going to sew to the end of my piping here. And then I'm going to bring that in at an angle and go straight across. When the side comes round, it will hide it like that. For the border, I'm just going to cut the center, top and bottom, and then putting the border so the pile is going this way. Pop that under there for now. now I'm going to just use this as a reference at the moment. So I'm going to pin here. Use a dressmaking pin, it's not going to go all the way through otherwise. And I'm going to come back to this corner and pin that. Pull it in really tight on that corner and pull it back. To here also pinning it as I get there and now I'm going to find a piece of fabric to fit along here because I don't have enough 
Now where the join is, I'm going to make sure that this is nice and flat as I go across. As I come into the shaping, I could clip at the back, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to let this fabric twist into place, still keeping the half inch distance. And that will come back down here. As I come into this corner, cut in about a quarter of an inch from the outside edge into that corner. Actually, I'm going to put another one in, so that's walked slightly. And another one, so it's got plenty of room. So into that corner, put the needle down. Double check that you're right where you need to be. I'm going to lift that foot extra high as I twist this fabric into place. The foot's down and start sewing. It should all go into position. I will check that corner before I finish and I'm going to just sew to the next corner and on round. My halfway mark has slightly walked but it's close enough and because of the length of fabric it doesn't matter if I didn't get it quite where it needed to be. For double piping, I have a double piping foot. It's got two grooves in it for the piping to run through. It makes life a lot easier. If you don't have one of these, you can actually use a normal foot. Just make sure that the center of the foot goes between the two pieces of piping. It works. I did that method for many, many years until I bought. This has certainly made life a lot easier. But you can buy double piping and it comes joined together and then they do like a loose stitch that holds the two pieces together. I don't have that so I'm going to have to do it with two separate pieces. Make sure that you're going with the grain of the fabric. So long as I'm coming down with it it'll be fine. If I was to go the other way it would make a bit of a mess. I want it as smooth as possible. I wrap the back around the front and then that around to the other side. So it's a little bit of a balancing act because you have to get both of those pieces underneath those under. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a leeway because I don't want it to be too close to the top and I am going to wriggle it so both sides should be under. You don't want them too close together as a general rule because if you do the stitching won't go where you want it to go which is to bring this down slightly so you have a double look. So let me get started and I am just going to hold that. You have to keep folding everything into place if you're doing it this way because you don't want to make a mess and just slowly make your way down the other thing is you just got to make sure that the piping runs next to each other it sometimes likes to twist and swap sides so that's another reason why I'm only going slowly now the two pieces of piping going next to each other shouldn't be any wider than your foot. And the reason I cut it on this angle was because I need the piping to go round curves. So if it puckers then it doesn't look so good, so that's why I've done it on this angle. The light's not very good, but you can see there's a definite groove between the two pieces. And for the most part, that is quite even. There's a couple of little places where it's a little bit bulky, but it will absolutely work. I've just cut back the excess and I always put this raw side facing the fabric so it's a nice finish on the outside. Just one of my personal ways of doing things. The seat comes to about here, I think. So I'm going to pop this down and staple it. And it's in between the lines. I'll put another one further down. I'm going to put another one. It's not going to be visible because the seat comes here. And then I will hot glue this into place. We'll start on the other side. I centered that. I've put extra padding underneath here so it makes it more square. And I'm bringing this all the way to the back of the chair and stapling it in place. I'm pulling it right into each corner. I've put the Dacron on. I've left polythene in place for now so that I can push that in. That. It's joined in the middle. It won't matter because the velvet will hide that. That down there, into the back there too. Now for the top. I'm going to pull the border up like this. I'm going to bring this back just a little bit from the front here. Here's the shaping. I'm going to put that right in that corner there so it just starts to come out as this comes out and that is where i'm going to start pushing the fabric in on both sides i'm going to bring that up at the back 
bring my polythene up. It's starting to shred because <laughs> it's had quite a bit of work done to it. So bring that up there like that. There's my shaping. And then I'm going to start pushing that down inside of there. And I'll do the same on this side. I've got the shaping here and I'm going to start pushing that down into there too so it's nice and even both sides once i'm happy with where it is on here then i'll start moving the front in because technically this piping should be in line on both sides so i might have to pull this side in and then that side i think that's where i want it and now i can start pushing this down because of the way the arm goes i'm going to cut in here now it looks like i'm cutting over but i'm really not because that's the outside i'm going to just cut down and I'm going to see how far that goes. That's gone down there. This is going to come around here. It might pull forward. I'll just have to work out what I'm doing with that. I might have to pull that one up a little bit so that it's right there. But that might come in as I'm working it. And again here, I don't really want to cut into my seam. So I'm going to cut just one side of the seam. And not all the way down because I need to push that into place as well. And into place. I might be able to pull it forward. But I don't want to pull it too much forward. Once you've got your chair seat moved into position, all I'm going to do is push this fabric down the back of the chair. With the polythene, it kind of makes it a little bit easier because you're not going against the other fabric at the top. Just ease that into place too. And then I can start cutting where I need it to be cut. I'm going to pop that up there so you can see. I'm pulling this down and forward slightly. And that. Make sure there's no wrinkles in it. And then towards the back. Now, I've gone quite a ways back here, so I can actually cut in if I want to. So I'll leave that for now, but I'm just gonna pull this on down. I think because of this shaping, I can just bring it down like that. And fold that in at the back like that. If I take this out, it will come in at a better angle. What I've got here is the original wadding, which comes into the corners. There's some foam on there, and I just wanted the, the foam not to have a ridge. So I've just put a little bit of batting on. It doesn't have to be very much. And I'm going to just pull this down, push that up, and into position. This might need to be pulled in a couple of times before I'm really happy with it. As I pull it down, the fabric's slipping through my fingers. That's why I think I might have to do this a couple of times, which is not unusual. That will hold that, and then I can work it to either side. And you'll already see the first one I put in is gonna be a little bit higher than the subsequent ones. I think this corner's too far over there. I've got to pull everything that way. So I'm going to pull this corner in here. I'll work around the corners as I get there. You can see this is gappy. So this one I'm going to move and bring in this way and then work my way across. I've evened it out slightly and what I'm going to do now is I need this to be equidistant from the top of the wood, which I can feel here. If I put that there and bring it down from the sewing here to the top of the piece of wood here, let's move it over a little bit, I need it seven and a quarter inches long. So I'm going to start from the center and move out, which it is here. So then I'm going to go to the next point and measure that. Now when I'm measuring, I'm actually pulling it down and across and that should take some of these lines out. So I haven't gone that side, I'm actually going to go this side again, measure down to my seven and a quarter. All I'm going to do is pull it out to the side. I put the piping, literally just goes over the top of the wood. So it's nice and even. And then I'm pulling the front border in, which I am pulling the front border to the side, but I'm also making sure that this is hard up against the piping so there's no gaps there so it looks nice and finished i'm using half inch staples because i need it to go all the way through and hold really firm i put them quite close together because i don't want any mishaps i want to make sure that that will not come off i've cut this back and folded it so it's hidden Bring that round and that round so it goes right into there. Should be nice and even with the piping. And then staple that into place like this. The top of this I'm pushing against the inside or the underside of the piping. All the way along. Even round the side. 
Now I prefer to do it that way because when I pull this over, it will hide any of the marks from where it's been put in. I'm going to push this down and round like that and just catch it under here. I'm not going to pull it in too tight and it should go in nice and evenly. I am pulling it out to the outside here and the same on the other side. I'm going to push it down and out. Cut back the Dacron because you don't want too much under there. The side here comes around too much so I'm going to cut this out like this just into this arm. I have a piece here that I'm going to fold but I'm going to fold it with about an inch over. The whole idea is it goes in at the bottom and fills out some of the side here like that. I'm going to just bring it up, pop that over the top so it smooths it out and then we'll cut down in line with the side of the chair. This fills out all of this and makes it more square than the rounded look that it had. I'm going to pop that underneath as well like that just to really push that out. Bring this in, push the side of this down along the side of the arm of the chair and it should pull all the way through to the back and I can pull that through try to make it look smooth because I've altered the way the back goes in it might take a little bit of work to get it to go in as I want it to I pull the base to the back as well all the way across and that should make it flatter here I'm pulling the arm of the chair back to the wooden frame here I've already cut but I've got to cut a little bit deeper on that side so that I can pull this back further here and I'm just going to staple across the top. I need it pulled as far back as I can possibly do it. I'm going to cut in across the back here of the back in at an angle. That's so I can fold that up and under and pull it back. On the other side I had to put some filler in but on this side I don't need to. This is about an inch from this seam. Flatten the seam out and pull the fabric right back into the wooden frame. Now this folds across the arm of the chair and then I'm pulling it back and slightly down, not all the way back. There we go, work all the way up. Doesn't look very smooth, unfortunately, but hopefully I'll smooth it out in a minute. All the way to the top. Having pulled this firmly to the back, pull that up here and staple along here. Once I've got one side in, I'm going to just work on the second side, pulling it through and then stapling it into place as well. I'm just pulling the inside back towards the back and securing that. I folded the bottom of the fabric up and just made sure that it's nice and neat towards the front. It doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see it. I'm pulling that in. There's a gap here so I can actually put more stuffing out there if I feel I need to. Now I'll do the other side. I have a staple here that's a little bit too close, so I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to fold it across the top into the corner and staple. So I'm going to pull this in really tight, running it along the outside edge of the wood. Pinch it in with your fingers. I've got half inch staples in, so the fact there's quite a bit of fabric there and materials makes no difference. I've actually decided to cut that back. I'm going to cut it just up from level at the bottom, like that, and fold it so it can go up and under. And put that right down there. Yeah, that will hold. I think this is going to be too short, so I'm actually going to put a little piece of fabric to extend each end because it's right down hard on the base there. I've lined up the centre here with here. The pile all goes the same way, which is very important. Staple that side. And that side just to start off with and hold it. Line up your length of back tacking and push that hard up against the piping cord and staple into place. I'm going to run the side of the tape and the side of the fabric next to each other. Double check it's nice and tight and staple. When you've done that infill and then repeat. So this piece, I'm going to come down the side and I'm going to secure it at the top here. And then I'm going to bring this down with it because I've got to twist it so that it will go into place like that. Now, if I'm lucky, as I twist everything into place, 
it shouldn't wrinkle and staple it. Now that can come over, but I still have to very carefully pull the fabric down by the piping and then put the back tacking there too. And then on down. It's a little bit complicated, but it's doable. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over across the top and secure it. And that has to go right up inside here. Just make sure all of your staples are in tight. Cut this level with the back of the chair so I don't have too much fabric there. And then just bring that down the back, not too tight. Make sure it goes into the shape of the chair. I actually measured and found the center for here, measured down five inches for this and across five inches. So everything's square on. But I also used a level so that I could make sure that all of this was level up and down. It's just one of those things that I've learned to do over the years. I've got the buttons made up. Make a loop, push it through the shank like that, and then loop it round like that. Once you've done that, I use a double-ended needle for this because it's a long needle. And then I'm going to just pop the threads through. And then using pliers, grip onto that and then push it through the back. I'm having to use pliers because I can't push it through easily. Once it's come through, pull the needle through. I should pull all the threads through. This one's an awkward one, actually. You can use cotton wadding or a piece of fabric, whatever you fancy. First part of a knot in, like that. Pull hard and then tie it off. And just repeat. I'm going to have to pull this one back in. It's not as tight. And that's something you sometimes need to do. So just go back and pull the lid back in. I'm just going to bring this in quite tight along here. I'm trying to keep it as flat as I can for as long as I can. Then as I come around here, I'm going to put one here so it's still flat. Then I'm going to bring in my cleats and put one here really tight. And then another one in here and tight. Because I'm trying to take the fabric from the back there. And the same at the back. Pull it down and in. The piping's going to go up and it will take some of these ripples out. Then I can put a couple of little pleats to help the fabric come around. If you need to, pull the back of the chair around. Put another one in in a minute. I've put a pleat in that matches on the other side. Actually, maybe I'll turn it down a little bit like that. Unfortunately, velvet's quite unforgiving. So although I've put it in, it isn't going in very smoothly. This matches the one on that side. And push all the wadding back and bring that down into the center. There's another small pleat right on the edge here. That also matches that side. Now, what's going on here, is so I'm going to just put little ripples into place, like that. Cut back, like that, as close as I can for the shaping. I'm going to put this double welt over it, but I need to have it as far back as I can without showing everything. I'm going to pop this along here and pull that round and up. I'm also going to put a couple of nicks in, just so that it goes nicely. That's the end of the piping cord. I'm going to leave it empty up to there and cut that back like that and staple that into position here and then into place along here. And often I don't put it underneath here, it's just that I need to hide some things here and along at the back here and around. This is the side piece. I've just got to make sure that it goes from here all the way across and behind. The velvet is going down and that it will go up as far as I need it to. So fold that under. Always double check your work because it does move as you move things around. Hold that in with my fingers there. Twist it up, even it out, staple it into place there. Pull it across, stabilize it and across to the base here. I'm not going to take it all the way to the end because I need to shape it. I'm going to pop that against here and push it up as far as I can. I prefer to get both legs of the staple in. The reason is that it holds better. The trouble is that it's hardly any wood up there so it's going to be hit and miss, which I don't like. If I do it as a slight angle it should hold. I'm just going to pop this over here and secure it not over where I'm going to be cutting it out. I'm going to peel it back so I can see where I need it. 
and also along the top here. Once it's in place, just cut round so it's nice and neat. Now I usually cut it to the edge and then when the fabric's pulled in, it usually pulls it on round slightly because you don't want too much fabric on the back side. Then along the front here, I'm going to put my scissors along the piece of wood and cut around. Don't cut the fabric, just cut the wadding. A little bit extra wadding there won't do it any harm. Pull this down from the top, make it as even as possible. So I pull it out either side and then to the center. I'm not pulling it too tight, I'm just pulling it into shape. Because I need this to go up, I'm going to come under here and I am going to just cut up. Just takes a little bit of time to work it into place. Okay, so there's that one. And not all the way up, because you don't want it showing on the other side. So let's do that. Push the wadding up underneath. That's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close enough. And then I'm going to just go down here. Just comes forward slightly and then that will hide everything that needs to be hidden and give it a good shape. Although this shows, it will be hidden by the double welt. I put piping around and I've just put the back tacking on to here. I'll cut that back in a second, but I'm just going to see how far down I need to take it. I think I'm going to have to do it a different way to usual because the chair is really heavy for me. I'm gonna cut the salvage off first. I'm gonna rely on the weight of the fabric to keep it in place. That has to go up to the top there. I'm just gonna put a pin straight in like that. It's just to hold it and put that one in there. And another one all the way down here. And that one I'm gonna go underneath so that will hold it better than the other two. I'm gonna keep it as straight as I can. I'm going to just push this under here like that and then close it up even more than it already is. Then I'm going to pull it down a little bit and into place down here. Make sure all the raw edges are behind the T, all the way down to the bottom. Now at the bottom end, which doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the chair, it finishes here. So I'm just gonna push that in like that. With the piece like this, I'm going to just gently tap all of this back because I don't want to bruise any of the fabric. I'm going to just slip that here and then I'm going to just bring it down here. I think I can get a staple on here and again down here. So this comes all the way down and I'm going to staple it. I'm pulling this out slightly like that and there's a reason for that. But I'm going to pull it in and staple it firmly here. I've got that in. I'm going to just cut in here. Not too far in at the moment. And I'm going to take that underneath here and staple that up and underneath here. We'll come round and then I'll just work out how to get this to look nice. I'm going to cut this at a bit of an angle because it goes down, not too close. There we go. And then here. I've just got to work out how to get the corners in. So I'm just going to tap that into position. That doesn't look good. There we go. Just make sure everything is where it needs to be. Usually involves a little bit of cutting back and persuading because you don't want too much fabric in there. Pop that in, pull that down, pull that little bit out and really work that into the crease and then close it up. So I'm just going to cut it along the top again. I'm a bit generous because I don't want to cut it too close. And I'm actually going to cut the white back a little bit more because I don't want it too pronounced around there. Because if there's too much of that, then you can't get the fabric to catch. I'm going to hold this over so it's square on and ease that behind here. There we go. Once it's in place, all but the last inch. That enables me to turn it on its side and do what I need to on this side. It's not going to be a really great finish. I will seal it there and there and again there. And then the blackout cloth, I am going to roll it back and put it at least an inch underneath so it doesn't show on the back. Nobody will see what it looks like and now I'll just do the other side. 